Artemi Panarin has a chance to break Yaramir Yager's franchise record for most points in a single season. Will the MVP candidate pull it off? Plus, Alexi Lafreniere could have a 30-30 season as a 22-year-old. And which team are the Rangers going to face in the first round of the playoffs? You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1043 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off of your first purchase. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, yeah, definitely want to talk a little bit about our Temi Panarin, just a ridiculous season. I mean, I've basically used every adjective there is in the English language to describe what our Temi Panarin is doing this season. Just a phenomenal campaign, and uh, his importance to this Ranger team obviously cannot be understated. You can add in another description for Panarin's season, and that is potentially record-setting. He's gone on a heater recently, even by Panarin's own very lofty standards that he set for himself in previous years, and of course, this year especially. So right now, Artemi Panarin, through 78 games, sits at 46 goals, 69 assists, and 115 points. Yaramir Yager, all those years ago, uh, he set the record for the Rangers for most points in a season. He played all 82 games, had 54 goals, 69 assists, a total of 123 points. So I'm no mathologist, but obviously Artemi Panarin is now eight points behind Yaramir Yager. He's got four games left to tie or break the record to tie it. Obviously, he's got to average two points per game. And we'll talk about, you know, whether or not he can do it briefly here. But one thing I just want to, you know, make clear right off the bat here, whether Panarin ties the record, breaks the record, or falls short of the record, my prevailing thought to you know, everything that Panarin is doing this year is you just don't want to waste a season like this if you're the Rangers or really any team in the NHL when you've got a star player having this kind of a campaign. Uh, Panarin, as we know, phenomenal player. I think he's going to remain at that level for, you know, at least a few more years to come at the very least. Um, But will he ever have a season quite like this one again where he's putting up this amount of points and he's, you know, offensively carrying this team to a degree at certain times. It's hard to say for sure. You know, it kind of reminds me of what Igor Shosturkin did two years ago and also put Igor Shosturkin up there against really any goalie in hockey. But as far as those video game, like just crazy insane numbers that he had two years ago, yeah, he might not ever get quite to that level again. That was an historic uh, season by any metric, by any kind of an eye test for an NHL goalie. And it's kind of the same for Panarin here, I mean, he's not quite up there as far as like, you know, the greatest single season of all time. We can't go that far, but it's a phenomenal season, obviously career year for him. And, you know, again, this concept of wasting a season like this, I want to talk about Yager because a lot of people, you know, they, they know what's going on right now. And then that's getting a little bit of attention on social media as far as Panarin potentially tracking down Yager. And again, either tying or breaking this record, but does anybody remember, like, off the top of their heads, what happened in the season that Yaramir Yager had 123 points? So the Rangers exceeded expectations that year, but by no means were they a bona fide Stanley Cup contender. Yager had 123 points that season, but unfortunately, the Rangers were swept out of the playoffs in the first round by the Devils. Uh, the Devils were the three seed. The Rangers were the six seed. Yager played in only three playoff games and had a grand total of one assist. And... Look, again, I'm not like putting that all on Yager or anything like that. And I wouldn't say that the Rangers, you know, wasted that season by Yager because that was a team that at the time, it was basically a bunch of castaways and like rejects from other teams. And the players on that team have said as much. It was Yager, it was a very young Henrik Lundqvist, and it was just a bunch of guys. And we had Jason Strudwick on this show as a guest a few years ago, and uh, he said as much. You know, they kind of rallied around that concept that they were, you know, the, the island of misfit toys, so to speak. And They had a much better season than anybody anticipated. But by no means, once they got to the playoffs, nobody was picking the Rangers to go on a crazy run and win the Stanley Cup that year. Now, this year, it's quite a bit different because when Yager 
had his awesome season, his uh, you know history making season. Again, the Rangers just weren't that great of a team. They were good enough to get into the playoffs, but obviously they didn't go very far. This is very very different because right now Panarin is having this awesome season, and it's a big reason why the Rangers have the best record in the NHL. And you don't know how many more shots you're going to get this. I do think that, you know, Panarin will stay at a very high level going forward for a few more years. I think this Ranger core group of players is going to get at least one or two more cracks at it before, you know, maybe some things start to look a little bit different. But even with that being the case, you, know, you tell me, when are the Rangers going to have a better shot at it than they have right now? I, I don't know that they will. Doesn't mean that they can't win it next year or the year after that. It's at least possible, but... Um, you don't want to waste this kind of a season from a team perspective, and you don't want to waste this kind of a season from the individual perspective, the ridiculous season that Artemi Panarin is having right now. But as for the fun stuff, you know, will he catch Yaramir Yager? Certainly possible. I mean, again, he's eight points behind. He's got to average two points per game in the final four here uh, to tie Yaramir Yager. It's not going to be easy, but it's very doable for Panarin and I mentioned that, you know, even by his own lofty standards, he's hot lately. I'm going to throw a stat at you guys to kind of illustrate my point here. In Panarin's last 13 games, he's got 11 goals, 17 assists, 28 points. 28 points in his last 13 games. And in only one of those games did Panarin not have any points at all. So eight points in his last four games would actually be a slight regression for Panarin uh, compared to what he's done in his 13 most recent games. Again, 28 points in those games, uh, which is hilarious to think about it. But yeah, I mean, he, he certainly has an opportunity and we'll have an opportunity as we go forward here and wrap up the regular season. But the other thing to keep in mind here, you know, the matchups, the Rangers to close the season here, they are against the Islanders, then the Flyers, then the Islanders, and then the Senators. And as far as like, you know, how are those teams defensively? Not great. The Islanders, give up 3.21 goals per game. That's 21st in the NHL. The Flyers give up 3.15 goals per game. That's actually a little better than the Islanders. That is 19th best in the NHL, but still below average, obviously. And then you've got the Senators who give up 3.48 goals per game, and that is fourth to last in the NHL. The Rangers in general scoring a lot of goals recently, and obviously Panarin has a hand in that, but the Rangers have scored four or more goals in six of their last eight games. You know, they had that, game against the Coyotes where they ended up with eight goals. Uh, and then you look at the penalty kills. And obviously, you know, Panarin does a lot of damage on the uh, the power play. The opposing penalty kills, though, the Islanders, and again, the Rangers will play them twice. They have the worst penalty kill in the NHL. The Senators are the fourth worst, and the Flyers are actually the fourth best. But still, you've got three or final four games against teams with just atrocious penalty kills. And honestly, eight points in four games is a lot. I think he's going to do it. I think Panarin is going to pull this off based on everything I just said there, the fact that he's hot, the fact that these teams are not great defensively, and that the Islanders and Senators both have atrocious penalty kills. I think Panarin's going to get there. I really do. Uh, as far as his MVP case, you know, I, I know a lot of people are invested in this, and, you know, it doesn't really bother me that much if Panarin doesn't win the heart or even the Ted Lindsay or any other hardware. Uh, there's only one trophy that I really, really care about, and I'm sure everybody can figure out what that is, but... He certainly deserves consideration. He's fourth in the NHL with 115 points. He trails Kucherov with 136, McKinnon with 133, and McDavid with 130. And I know points aren't everything, but um, as we know, this award does often go to the player with the most points. Not every year. I mean, it's not a you know requirement or anything like that, but will he finish higher than all three of those players in MVP voting despite them having more points? Probably not. Probably not. Never say never, though. Again, I, I think the verbiage of that award is very important. I've talked about that in the past. Most valuable player doesn't always mean best player. It means who is the most irreplaceable, most valuable player to his respective team. I think there's a very good chance that that is Artemi Panarin. I'm not going to act like I watch every Lightning game, every Avalanche game, every Euler game, and know exactly you know the exact value that those players, Kucherov, McKinnon, and McDavid have to those teams. But regardless... You know, I, I don't think there are too many players in this league that are much more valuable to their team than Artemi Panarin is to the Rangers. And of course, one of the biggest things that Panarin has done this year in terms of value is he has elevated Alexi Lafreniere to a level that he was nowhere near in his first three seasons in the NHL. And to a lesser extent, you know, Vincent Trocek, he, he's having probably his best season of his career. And obviously part of that 
is due to playing with Panarin. But with Lafreniere, we're going to talk about him more specifically. He's chasing a milestone. We're going to look at some other Rangers that are either at career best in certain stats or trying to chase down their career best. Uh, there's some interesting ones for sure, and we're going to get to all that in just a second. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in a search according to U.S. Indeed data. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on, Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so... We're going to go ahead and uh, keep everything rolling here. I want to turn our attention to Alexi Lafreniere and then a couple of other Rangers as well, uh, trying to, you know, get to certain milestones, uh, hunt down, you know, career best marks in some cases. And like I said, we'll start with Lafreniere here. So basically career highs across the board. We've talked about how this is a breakout season for Lafreniere. And again, your definition of a breakout season might be different from mine. Maybe you think that point per game would be more of a breakout season to me. Uh, Alexi Lafreniere has broken out in a big way for the Rangers this season, and hopefully he's got more levels that he can yet get to. But again, career highs everywhere this season for Lafreniere. Career high 27 goals, career high 29 assists, career high 56 points, and a shot at a 30-30 season as a 22-year-old. And wasn't too long ago that all of us Ranger fans were hearing about, oh, he's a bust, he's no good, he can't play, this guy's better, that guy's better. You know what? Alexi Lafreniere has had himself a whale of a season. And as far as whether or not he gets to 30-30, I would say, I mean, he only needs one more assist, and he's got four games to do it. So I think he gets there. Don't know that he's quite going to get to uh, 30 goals. You know, he needs three and four games. That's not easy to do. But, you know, for all the reasons I just mentioned with Panarin, he's at least got a shot at it. Uh, the Rangers are going up against some teams that, in many cases, are not good defensively as far as how many goals they give up per game. Lafreniere, his quest for 30-30, it's hurt a little bit by the fact that he won't get nearly as much power play time as, you know, Panarin or anybody on that top unit. So I think he falls a little bit short of 30 goals, but obviously I would love to be wrong about that. But, you know, regardless of whether he gets there or not, just such a relief to see Alexi Lafreniere having a season like this. You know, I think that in the past, as we've talked about, he's always shown these flashes, but you watch him this year and there's just a certain confidence about him. Um, I, I think his skating has certainly improved. He really sticks his nose in there during a lot of games. Again, we, we talked about this with Trocek in our last episode because he won the Stephen McDonald Extra Effort Award. And again, congratulations to Trocek for that. But Alexi Lafreniere, it's very rare where you have a game where you just don't notice him. You know, he's somebody that's going out there and finding on every shift. And I mean, what a match made in heaven, him and Artemi Panarin. Panarin has really helped Lafreniere elevate. And I've made, made this point in the past as well. Let's not lose sight of the fact that Artemi Panarin is having the best season of his career, and he's doing that with Lafreniere and Trocek. So those two uh, certainly deserve some credit for that as well. You know, there's a little bit of give and take going on with that line all season. And something else that I thought of with Lafreniere, you know, as I'm kind of preparing for this episode, the Raiders might want to think about getting him a contract extension this offseason. Now, they obviously don't have to because Lafreniere is under contract next year uh, at $2.325 million. And then once that season is over he will be an arbitration-eligible, restricted free agent. But as we talked about before, it's good to get ahead of these things. The Rangers have done that in the past. They've done it with guys like, uh, 
you know, Mika Zibanejad, Adam Fox, certainly Igor Shesterkin, I think is a great example there. The longer you wait, the more expensive Lafreniere is going to be. And I get the feeling he'd be open to it. I mean, he gets to play on a line that is among the best lines in the NHL. This year, he gets to play with uh, just an otherworldly player in Artemi Panarin. He seems to like New York. I mean, I can't speak for Lafreniere. For all I know, maybe he's more of a small town guy, um, but he seems to enjoy the limelight. He, he seems to enjoy you know, the pressure that comes with playing in New York. Two years ago, had an awesome playoff run. You know, the kid line really took off and, and really came into their own during uh, that deep run that the Rangers had. You know, that kind of feels like an off-season episode where we talk about what a new contract for Alexi Lafreniere could look like. But for right now, I'll just say the time is now to get this done. Not literally now, but once this season ends, you get into the off-season, the, the dust settles a little bit. Hopefully the confetti is done falling from the Rangers' uh, ticker tape parade for the Stanley Cup win. Um, we'll see if, if that happens or not. It would be amazing. But I think once all those things happen, you sit down with Alexi Lafreniere, you try to hammer something out and get it done. And obviously he's going to make more than the uh, current 2.325 million that he's getting uh, with any kind of an extension. But again, the longer you wait, the more expensive this will get. And I think it's a good idea for the Rangers to at least see if they can get something done with Lafreniere, um, you know, long-term extension moving forward. Uh, a couple of other milestone kind of like honorable mentions here. I really wanted to highlight Panarin, really wanted to highlight uh, Lexi Lafreniere, but there are uh, some other players that, you know, are approaching or in some cases have already beaten previous career best. We'll start with Kreider. Uh, he can play all 82 games of a season for the first time in his career. Uh, he has played in 81. He's played in 80. He's had 79 in three different seasons. He's never played all 82, and um, he could do that. I mean, we'll see if Laviolette decides to rest anybody. Uh, not sure how that's going to go. But the other thing with Kreider, he's got a shot for a new career high in points. He's got 70 right now. That's his second highest total ever. Uh, two years ago, he had 77. So, yeah, seven points in four games would, would tie his previous career. It's going to be tough. Uh, probably does not get there. But, you know, for somebody that phases as much critique as Chris Kreider does, and I've done it before too. I'm not going to act like I've never, uh, you know, talked ill. I mean, not ill, but like I've never said anything on here where, you know, I want Kreider to pick it up and get his game to that next level. Um, he went through a funk not too long ago where I, I really don't know what was going on. Obviously, he can be a streaky player. We all know that. Um, but, hey, you know what? Already the second highest point total of a very – solid, strong career for Chris Kreider and an outside chance of perhaps setting uh, his new career high in points. And again, this is coming from somebody that does come under fire from Ranger fans from time to time. Not a bad season at all. Now, somebody's going to say something about power play points. Yeah, I know. You're allowed to score goals on the power play. It is permitted in the NHL. Uh, Barclay Goodrow. So obviously he comes under fire from Ranger fans sometimes too. And yeah, the contract's a little pricey, et cetera, et cetera. But Barclay Goodrow this year, Career high, 83 block shots. His previous career best was 68. He's also got a career high, 164 hits. His previous career high was 162. So again, this is somebody that is not bringing offensive fireworks, although lately he is fighting the back of the net uh, somewhat often. He had, what was it, like three goals in four games or something like that after only having one goal the entire season. Um, but this is somebody that goes out there and plays blue-collar hockey and grinds and does everything he can. Look. He's not as talented as Artemi Panarin. He's not as talented as Alexi Lafreniere or Mika Zibanejad or you know, Adam Fox, if you want to throw a defenseman in there. But this guy goes out there. He's got his hard hat on every night, and he goes to work for this Ranger team. And uh, that's reflected in two you know, blue-collar, tough stats. Uh, again, block shots and hits. I mean, doesn't everybody want the Rangers? Uh, everybody says they got to be tougher. They got to be grittier, right? Well, Barkley Goodrow does bring that to the table uh, for the New York Rangers. You've also got Capo Caco. Uh, he is a plus 10 right now, despite not having a ton of points. His previous career best in that stat is plus 12. So he's got a shot to set a new career best there. And plus minus is not perfect. We know that, but um, still would be a nice uh, mini milestone for Capo Caco, I guess you could say. And, and I think certainly reflective of the fact that you know, maybe he's not lighting up the score sheet every night, but teams also are not scoring goals when he's on the ice. So that, that's good to know as well. I mean, Johnny Brodzinski, career highs across the board because he obviously has shattered his previous career high in games played. Uh, Adam Fox has got 69 points right now. He would need five more to tie his previous best of 74. Uh, again, certainly doable. And also a career high 42 hits from Adam Fox. Uh, Keandre Miller needs one more goal to tie his previous career best of nine. Uh, Ryan Lindgren, one more goal to tie his previous career best of four. 
You've got Braden Schneider. He can play 82 games for the first time in his career. Also needs one more point to reach 19. That would be a new career high. He is uh, currently tied for his previous career high in points. And he's also got a career high 155. Okay, let's try that again. A career high 155 hits. Then you've got Zach Jones. I mean, career high across the board because he has played more games than he ever has uh, in his NHL career before this season. He's got 31 games. His previous career high was 16. So, you know, again, we're kind of wrapping up the regular season here. I thought it would be kind of interesting to see where some of these players stand. And a couple of these stats surprised me a little bit. Um, You know, there's so much happening. Sometimes you forget to go back and, and just like look at these stats and, okay, where is this guy versus what he usually does and what can he get to? Can he set a new career best and this stat or that stat? Always kind of an interesting uh, exercise and a, a fun time of the year to, uh, you know, do just that and just kind of see where everything stands. But in just a second here, we're going to turn our attention to this Rangers Islanders matchup that's going to be happening a little bit later here tonight, 7 p.m. to be exact. Also going to take a look at the playoff picture and try to figure out who the Rangers are going to play in the first round, which is no easy task because uh, those playoff standings right now are a jumbled mess. And obviously it's nice that the Rangers have long since clinched, but we'll get to all that fun stuff in just a second. First, we definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports concerts comedy theater etc save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download GameTime today. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. All right, so uh, who's up for a little Rangers-Islanders tonight? That's what's going to be happening. Obviously, uh, the Rangers have won the two previous meetings, and frankly, this is a bigger game for the Islanders than it is for the Rangers because the Islanders are trying to get into the playoffs. Rangers are there. They're just trying to have as good of a record as possible and possibly the best record in the Eastern Conference, possibly the best record in the entire NHL. They've got the inside track for all of the above. And uh, to kind of break down where everything stands right now, Rangers, 110 points. Again, tops in the NHL. They are followed by the Stars and the Bruins, who have 107 each. And then you've got the Canes with 105. All those teams I just mentioned, including the Rangers, have played 78 games. They have four games to go. And to clinch the Metro Division, the Rangers uh, will need four more points in their last four games. But there's also a scenario where they can actually uh, clinch a little bit later tonight. We're going to get to that in just a second. But four points in four games, looking at the standings, I can see uh, that that would guarantee the Metro Division for the Rangers. I know there are also some fans that want the Rangers to avoid Tampa Bay in the first round, and you can see why. I mean, you know, they haven't had their best season, but obviously they've done a lot of winning, and they know what it takes to get it done in the playoffs. Uh, You never know when they could go on another run. And, I mean, that's just been an absolute battle between these two teams over the last handful of seasons here. Um, But the good news for everybody that really wants the Rangers to avoid Tampa Bay in the first round, if the Rangers win the Metro Division, which, again, they have the inside track, it's right there in their hands, they control their own destiny there, um, it would basically be impossible for the Rangers to play Tampa Bay in the first round. The reason being, Tampa Bay right now is currently uh, the top wildcard team. There's two wildcard teams. They have the first wildcard spot right now. For them to drop down to the second wild card and for somebody else to pass them, I mean, they basically have to go winless or just about winless the rest of the way. And some other team would have to go like 4-0, 5-0. That's probably not going to happen, especially because Tampa's played well recently. So if you are worried about Tampa, then you should be rooting for the Rangers to have the best record in the Eastern Conference. And then you can't be worried about the President's Trophy. You got to you gotta, uh, you know, pick your poison here, I suppose. But bottom line, um, you know, the Rangers... The way things stand right now, as long as the Rangers keep playing the way they're they're playing and they win enough games here, it, there's a good chance that they will finish with the best record in the Eastern Conference, in which case they would avoid Tampa. Boston's right there. You got to keep wanting to stay ahead of them. Um, but again, they control their own destiny to doing exactly that. 
And as for the clinching scenario, you've got the Rangers um, possibly winning the Metro Division tonight. They'll need a little bit of help to do that. But if they can beat the the Islanders in any fashion, uh, regulation, overtime, or shootout, and also the Canes lose to the Bruins in regulation, then the Rangers are your Metro Division champions. Uh, the Bruins and Canes also play each other at 7, so those games will be going on at the same time. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, it'd be cool to clinch tonight, even if they don't, though. You know, hopefully, obviously, the Rangers uh, do eventually wrap up this division. You know, we'll see how everything goes. But Rangers have to be ready. Uh, this is going to be a dogfight. The Islanders have been hot lately. They've won four in a row. They've needed every point. And the Rangers, as I mentioned, 2-0 and against the Islanders this year. They beat them 6-5 in overtime in the outdoor game. Also beat them 5-2 to uh, at Madison Square Garden. So, obviously, the Islanders... Again, they, they need this win. They need these points more than the Rangers do. Um, you know, there are a lot of Ranger fans out there. I want to mention this um, because I've talked about, you know, who's the Rangers' biggest rival. And there's certain fans that tell me that it will always be the Islanders no matter what happens. The Islanders are a rival of the Rangers in current day, the, the last couple of years here, the last two years, five years, ten years. Are the Islanders the biggest rival of the Rangers? I don't think they are. Can anybody name like a other than Rempe fighting Martin? Because that obviously that just happened and that's fresh in everybody's mind. And you know, that game was crazy and it went into overtime, the outdoor game, and Aaron wins it in overtime. Other than that, like what's the big like Ranger Islander moment from, from the last like again, two years, five years, ten years? I I don't really know what it would be. Um, you know, th there's intensity in their games, and obviously, you know, that rivalry still does exist and um, you know, you get some barn burners between these teams from time to time, but has it reached, you know, Rangers Islanders is the level of animosity there, the way it is between the Rangers and the Penguins, uh, the Rangers and the lightning, even the Rangers and the Caps. certainly in recent seasons. I don't think it is, but if there's ever a time for that to happen, if there's ever a time for the gasoline to really be poured on the fire, it's going to be this next handful of games here because the Rangers, uh, play the Islanders. Tonight, obviously, and then they also play them on Saturday. And again, these are games with just massive playoff implications um, for the Islanders. I mean, a little bit for the Rangers because they can improve their seeding or whatever. But, you know, it's bigger for the Islanders. These games should be tightly contested, intense. Uh, let's see old school Rangers Islanders in uh, these matchups tonight. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And as I mentioned in the past, good for the Rangers to play some of these desperate teams late in the season and kind of you know, feel that playoff atmosphere. Because really, I mean, for the Islanders and the Rangers are going to play the Flyers too. Every night is game seven for them right now. They they cannot afford to lose games. The playoff picture is just way too jumbled. And, you know, I'm mentioning about how the Rangers are going to play the Islanders twice here. They might play them more than that because if the Islanders do get in, uh, it's possible that they are the second wild card. Right now, they are third in the Metro Division. But if they end up as the second wild card team, then we will get our first Ranger Islander playoff matchup since 1994. Of course, the Rangers uh, just steamrolled the Islanders that year. The Rangers were the one seed. The Islanders were the eight seed. The Rangers swept them, did so in dominant fashion, and of course, went on to win the Stanley Cup. Um, I think this year, if those two teams play in the playoffs, it would be a tough matchup. I mean, honestly, I don't think any playoff matchup is going to be easy anymore. You know, I kind of learned my lesson because 2012, I've talked about this series in the past. It's kind of the forgotten Ranger playoff series, but they played the Senators in the first round, one seed versus eight seed, and it just turned into an absolute dogfight. And, and that was one of the most intense, physical, demanding series, playoff series that I can ever remember the Rangers playing. They fell behind three to two, had to win game six on the road and game seven at home, and were able to do that. But I mean, what an absolute, just again, dogfight of a series and, you can just never assume that like, oh man, we're going to just walk right by this team. We'll sweep them or, you know, maybe five games. I'll never think that that's going to happen again. I don't think, you know, predicting a Ranger playoff series at this point that I would ever predict them to win in less than six games because it's just, it's just so hard in the, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And I think this year, maybe more than ever, it feels so wide open, so many good teams, so many teams capable of going on a run. You know, there's popular teams that the experts are picking to win the Stanley Cup. And I'm sure you guys all have your picks too, but um, we're going to be surprised in the playoffs by something, you know, sooner or later. And um, that usually is always the case. I mean, obviously last year, Panthers over Bruins in the first round. Need I really say more? So definitely looking forward to it. Um, and and going to be a playoff like atmosphere, I think between the Rangers and Islanders tonight. So definitely looking forward to that game. Hopefully the Rangers can go to three and O against the Islanders this season. And, um, you know, obviously deal the Islanders a blow. We'll see what happens. Um, one other fun fact before we call it here, this is the Rangers first regular season game at UBS arena since October 26, 
22. So it's been 531 days. Just a little fun fact for you guys there. Um, but yeah, I figure we could pretty much call it there. If you guys would like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to locked on nyrangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is locked on nyrangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.